Well, hello, I'm Doug Apple, back with another special interview for you today. And our guest here in the studio is Ashley Jones from Tallahassee Christian College and Training Center. You can see more information on their website, tcctc.org. But Ashley is working on a book called Girls with Gusto, and she's teaching a five-week course at Tallahassee Christian College and Training Center called Navigating Your Spiritual Journey. And we're going to find out what that is all about and talk about girls with gusto. And Ashley, go ahead and first of all, just introduce us to yourself a little bit. Hi, Doug. So glad to be here today. Uh, So I am a blogger, a writer, teacher, speaker, I kind of do it all. And uh, the whole goal is, is to dig into the word and provide that information to readers or to students in my class and just help them to to dive in and apply that word to their lives. So you have this class and it's entitled Not Girls with Gusto, right. that's the book, but Navigating Your Spiritual Journey. How do we navigate our spiritual journey? Well, and it's funny you point that out, that the class is actually for girls or guys of all ages. Uh, the book is more centered toward uh, young women, uh, but the in- information applies to all of us. So uh, we are expanding that and hope we have some guys in the class, too. So the topic, uh, navigating your journey. So what I've identified in my many years, 13 years now of researching on this topic is that our spiritual journey has eight steps and it applies to all of us, uh, just like our natural laws of reaping and sowing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we can apply those laws to our lives and go from one step to the next. And the goal of that is to draw closer to the Lord. And so as we mature in our Christian faith, we should be able to draw closer to him. And that should be evident in our lives. And then as we do that, we should also become the person that God intended us to be. So I should become the Ashley that God made me to be. And you can be the Doug God meant you to be. And so how do we get from that point of salvation to to that end result? And so that's what the class is all about. So how have you navigated your own spiritual journey? It sounds like it was smooth sailing. Not at all. (laughs) I started this book in 2003 and didn't even know that's what I was doing. The Lord put this this idea on my heart, uh, and it was a time of great turmoil in my life. Um, My grandmother had just passed. Um, The following year, I went through a divorce. Um, Just a lot of upheaval in my life, and I didn't know where to put it. I didn't know where God was in the midst of it. And at the time, he was planting these seeds and showing me that he was in all of it. And so he drew me closer and closer to him and laid this out. And it was not an easy process at all, Um, but it was one that he was there with me every step. And so as I uh, learned more, I was able to apply that to my life and I was able to start walking through some of these steps but it's a cyclical process. So even as I'm writing these steps now, as I'm continuing to write this manuscript, um, I'm going through it again. So I'm I'm smack dab in step four right now. <laughs> <laughs> so what is step four? <laughs> so step four is around bearing fruit. And uh, it's, it's interesting, the more I even dig into that, the more I realize there's more to it than I thought. And that's just how the word works. And so, uh, it's, it's really about opportunity. And in fact, just being here today is an opportunity. And it's amazing that when we open our, our hearts to what God wants to do, he will open door mm. after door after door if mm. we will be obedient and then be faithful in those opportunities. It just doesn't stop. So just, just being aware, being obedient, being faithful to that, it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing at all. But it's, it's something that I'm I'm learning. <laughs> so how can someone, a listener, know if a door that opens to them is God or maybe it's just benign mm-hmm. or maybe it's the devil? I mean, how, mm-hmm. how do you know there's an open door? Hmm, should I do that or not? It's such a good question. And it's there's not really an easy answer to that. Um, and I think that's why it's step four. You know, at that point, we've been through the other three steps, the first being a clean heart where God comes into our lives and cleans us up and and puts us on a right path. And and then we have a spirit of joy. So we learn to base our 
our emotions and our our feelings on him and not on everyday circumstances. And then um, we have uh, a disciple's disposition. So we're learning to walk from day to day and to be obedient. So by the time we get to bearing fruit, we have a, a much deeper relationship with the Lord than we did on day one. And so that door is a little bit more evident to us. Um, but we still have to pray. We still have to seek the Holy Spirit's guidance in our lives. And then we have to search the scriptures to see what that says. And if it's something that doesn't jive with either of those, then we know that's not the door for us. Now, what would you say to someone? Like I had a gentleman tell me the other day, and I was just talking about the fire of God and, uh, you know, uh-huh. feeling that fire in your life. And when you read the Bible and the Holy Spirit stirs within you and yes. makes something jump off the page at you or a door opens and uh-huh. and the Holy Spirit leaps within you and says, do it or don't do that. No matter what, don't do that. Right. And he said, well, you know, um, I don't think most Christians are there. What's your comment on that? Yeah, Uh, I was very surprised as I started speaking about this topic and even speaking in churches about this topic that there is a disconnect. And I I really had to seek the Lord on that because I don't want to say anything that offends Christians or is a stumbling block. That's that's a major um, goal of mine is to never, ever be a stumbling block for a Christian. So. I really had to, to seek him on this because I'm, I'm hearing some Christians say that sort of thing. And and I, I would agree with what he's saying, that there are a lot of Christians that just aren't there. And I think that underlines the reason and importance for this, because we need to see that there is a maturity uh, that we should attain in the Lord. And it's going to feel different with everybody. We're all going to have different circumstances and um, we're, we're going to have um, different roles within the church. So it's amazing to think about the fact that there are steps that apply to each of us and mm. what those are, no matter where we live or how old we are uh, or what our backgrounds are. But I was just thinking this week, it's, it's like when you have a a friend who has a child and in the first thing you think is, oh, it's this perfect, healthy, beautiful little baby. And that's what you hear. You see the pictures mm-hmm. and you hear all the fun stuff about the baby. And then you start asking a couple of weeks later and you start hearing things like, oh, well, they're in the 90th percentile of their age, <laughs> and, you know, height and weight and, and communication skills. And, and for years, that's what you hear. How do they measure up, mm-hmm. you know, with the standard and the idea behind that to make sure that they're getting what they need. You know, if, if they're underweight, they need better nutrition. Mm-hmm. And if if their communication skills aren't up to par, then they need help. And so it's not to burden or hurt the child. It's to make sure that they're on the right track. We don't have that in the church. Mm-hmm. So you have a, a new Christian get saved on Sunday, and the next week they're off on a missions trip. <laughs> and then the next week they're not in church anymore. And we wonder mm-hmm. what happened. Mm-hmm. And so I've been through this. I've I've been through it myself personally as a young person in the church and just felt very aimless and did not know what I was supposed to do, what the next step was. And I knew there was more, but all I could think of was praying more and reading more. And I thought, well, at some point there's not going to be more. It won't be any more hours in the day. And what, and what's, you know, what am I supposed to do with that information? Mm-hmm. So I think the idea here is that as we become Christian, as we meet the Lord and we start to figure out what that means and how we live that out, that there should be a standard that we that we learn how to apply that to our lives. Am I, am I falling behind? Am I, and not in relation to other people, but in relation to the word, um, am, am I really connecting with the Lord? Am I really applying that to my life? Or am I still selfish? Am I still in sin? Am I, am I still struggling with demons? I shouldn't be. And so letting us figure out where we stand and then get the help we need from the church body to, to move forward. Well, one thing I'll address that you mentioned, and some people might think, especially if they're hungry for the Lord, but they're sort of aimless or not sure what to do. And one thing they might say is, I need to read the Bible more. I need to read the Bible. I need to read a whole chapter. I need to read a whole book. I need to read the the through the Bible in a year. I need to read through it in six months. I better read through it every month. I need more Bible, more Bible, more Bible. And I'm all about the Bible. I believe in memorizing scripture. I've read the Bible through, study the Bible daily. So I'm all about the Bible. But let me add to this because a phrase we throw around a lot is our relationship with God. Yes. Your relationship with God. Okay, yes. well, here's one way to tie in the Bible 
and your relationship with the real, true, living God who lives inside every believer. All right. And that is this. And I go back to the men on the road to Emmaus. So Jesus has died. He's resurrected. Two men are walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Jesus walks up and begins talking and teaching them. They don't know that it's him until they get to Emmaus. They go in, they start to eat. He, he has the bread and he disappears. So then, but they say to each other, one of them says, did not our hearts burn within us while he opened the scriptures to us? Right. And I say it again. Did not our hearts burn within us while he opened the scriptures to us? So now back to your own personal Bible reading. There you are. And we're tying together Bible reading and your relationship with God. So you're reading the Bible. It's not necessarily about the volume of your reading, mm -hmm. but it's about the, the Lord opening the scriptures to you. That's in the relationship part. Exactly. And, and, and the uh, phrase make our hearts burn within us. Mm -hmm. And so I love that phrase. And so I'll, often I'll encourage people, hey, pick up your Bible and start reading, but be watching for God to make something jump out at you mm -hmm. or make your heart burn within you when he opens it to you. See, those guys on the road to Emmaus, they probably knew the scriptures, but there's one thing to read them, study them, learn them and know them. And it's another thing entirely to have the Lord open it to you. And most Christians that read the scriptures have had that experience where they're reading along and all of a sudden, oh, I never saw that before. Or, wow, that is just what I need today. And then what do they do is sometimes they'll just keep on reading. Well, I got to finish my chapter. Got to finish my book. Got to finish this today. Got to stay on schedule. Whereas it's uh, it's like you found the pearl of great price. Stop digging. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, take it into your hands, hold it, examine it, look at it, meditate on it, write it down, memorize it, meditate it on, on it all day, meditate it on it all week. You know, let it sink in. This is the seed of the word. Let it take root within you. And even if it means you totally blow your <laughs> Bible reading schedule and now you're all off track because the Bible reading was not. For Bible reading's sake, Bible reading was for drawing near to God and learning more of him. And so that's sort of a catalyst. But then the Holy Spirit begins to stir within you, makes your heart burn within you as he opens the scripture to you. Now you're into the realm of the relationship with the real living God who's in you. He opens up the scripture to you. He's speaking to you through that. And now he wants to take that and he will apply it to your life, help you to understand it, help you know where it fits into all the scenarios that you're running into. And then when you see open doors, oh, that door pops open. All of a sudden that that scripture that you meditate on 20 years ago comes back up within you as once again, the Holy Spirit saying, hey, remember what I said about this? Uh, that applies to this open door. So it's about that relationship with God. So that really got me off on that little uh, rant right there. <laughs> I, I completely agree. And I love the way that you put it. And and that's really what happened in my life. Um, my, my grandmother was just the most amazing woman I've ever met in my life. And anyone who knew her would say the same. And when she died, it, it sent us in turmoil. Mm. And I knew that when I saw Proverbs 31, I knew that was her. Mm. Was that, that, that just... She exemplified that chapter in every single way, but I didn't. And mm -hmm. so I felt a lot of guilt and a lot of condemnation when I read that. And I didn't know what to do with it. And I wanted to just kind of set that aside and say, well, that's that's awesome. That makes me think of her. And that, that has nothing really to do with me right now. And I couldn't. The Lord kept bringing me back to it. And at one point, I just didn't want to hear it anymore. I didn't mm -hmm. want to hear sermons on it. I didn't want to read books on it. I didn't want it anymore. And... He kept bringing me back and kept bringing me back. And he said, no, there's more to this. Mm. You're not seeing it. Read it again. Read it again. And I kept seeing things that didn't make sense to me and and that made me question. And every time he would say, see, 
keep going. There's mm-hmm. more. And so he set this in front of me as something that he wanted me to dig into. And and like you said, there were I was already in Bible classes. There were a lot of other things that I had to be reading. Mm-hmm. And I did. Um, and I, in fact, I, I finished my master's at the Tallahassee Christian College in 2010. But this one little chapter with just 31 little verses in it mm. is what the Lord centered in my life. And I had really didn't have any control over that. And so I totally agree that we have to be responsive. When the Holy Spirit leads us into something, we can't really push that aside. We do need to be obedient to that and faithful to the fact that he's putting that in front of us for a reason and a purpose. And and it all comes back to his glory. So we need we need to be obedient. Um, so I, I completely agree. And sometimes we do let our religion and our um, our desire to check the box override mm. God's ability to move in our lives, and um, and that's one thing that as I share this with folks, they they say, oh steps. Wait a minute, there's steps. <laughs> Wait, I, I don't know about the, these steps that you talk about. You know, I'm saved. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't need steps. It's, no, no, no. It's not steps to salvation. We're all clear on that. Mm-hmm. You know, thank, thankfully, the Lord did what He did, and, and we stand on that. Um, and and that should not ever be undermined but these are steps to drawing close to him and i've even had some folks question that Mm. well do we need that and and uh that's to me a sad commentary on the church uh yes yes we need to draw close (laughs) to the lord and and it might be that eight steps make sense to me and four make sense to you or Mm -hmm. maybe a different word instead of steps maybe levels or just just days or Mm -hmm. something like that would make better sense to you and that's fine. That's that's our worldly uh, context coming into play. But the idea that that we need to run the race, that that we need to box with you know without beating in the air, there are things we need to do to draw closer to the Lord. And mm-hmm. we need to fight against our flesh and against the enemy that comes against us. We need to take up all the, the tools and techniques that the Lord gives us, and not keep them laying on the ground you know as a as a church as individuals we we need we need to do what the lord calls us to do so um so i think it all kind of fits together like you're saying but mm. it's it's not a check the box activity for sure <laughs> well i want you to answer this after i reintroduce you and talk about Tallahassee Christian College and Training Center but uh, i want you to answer this question because we you talk about, you know, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit or, you know, knowing that the the Lord's in it or however we want to phrase it. The question that people often ask is, how can I know that it's God and not just my own mind? Mm. So you think about that for a second. I'll remind our listeners we're talking with Ashley Jones. She's a writer, blogger, teacher, speaker, and she is a teacher at Tallahassee Community College and Training Center. You can see more information about their classes at tcctc.org. Those initials stand for Tallahassee Christian College and Training Center. And Ashley Jones is teaching a five-week course coming up here in the fall semester called Navigating Your Spiritual Journey. And she's also working on a book called Girls with Gusto, which we'll get into in a little bit. But first, Ashley, let's answer this question. How can somebody know that it's God leading them or motivating them or speaking to them rather than just their own mind running amok? It, it's a great question. And I think it's one we've we've all asked. Um, even just this past month, I had a decision to make and I just really didn't feel God pressing an answer on me. I really didn't feel the, the clouds part and the Lord speak. And mm-hmm. and I, I didn't know. And uh, in, in my situation, the Lord gave my husband the answer. And I had to be obedient to that. And and then once I accepted the fact that maybe God wasn't speaking very directly to me, mm-hmm. um, it, it I had total peace about it. I knew I knew that that, that was right. Um, I think the I think that question really has to first be answered by another question, and that is, do you know the Lord? Mm. Um, a lot of people say, well, we, we talk we talk about Christianity in terms of. This, this thing, this religion, this idea, mm-hmm. and we forget that Christianity means we're, we're following the person mm-hmm. of Jesus, who is the Christ. Mm-hmm. So if you know the Lord and you know what he likes and what he doesn't like, and you know um, his, 
his personality, if you will, then then I think it's a little bit of an easier question to answer. Um, you, you know, the, the Lord would never lead you to do anything against himself. He's always in agreement with himself. And so if, if there is something in the word that speaks against it, then you know it's not of him. Uh, if if you're if you have total peace within your spirit about it, um, and I know that's kind of a vague statement, but if you do have peace about it and, and you know the Lord, you've walked with him for any length of time, you, you can get to that point where mm-hmm. you just know. You just know that's where the Lord's leading you. And it should get like that. Um, in a part of my book, I, I write about this, that um, you know, when, when you're a little kid and uh, mom's teaching you not to put your hand on the stove, first thing she says is no don't put your hand on the stove you know she's you know she's gonna yell she's gonna get your attention she might even pop your little hand so you know there's danger there Mm -hmm. don't do that but as we get older we shouldn't need mama to yell at us uh in fact most of us are very familiar with that look mom gives (laughs) you know where those eyes just just bore into you and you know that's that's something you don't do. And and so we get to that point in our relationship with our loved ones where we know, we know very well with even a look and no words that, that that's something good or bad. How much more should we should we have a relationship with the Lord? Mm. He lives in us. We, we, there shouldn't be that much confusion over what he wants for us. Mm-hmm. So I think as we as we're new Christians, there's gonna be that confusion. Uh, and that's why we have the word and, and we pray. And then we also have mentors in our lives and other Christian um, believers who are more mature that we can talk to and have some guidance from them. But as we develop our relationship with the Lord, even though we should maintain the word and the prayer and the accountability, it becomes more clear what the Lord wants for mm-hmm. us because his um, His desire and his person is more clear to us. Yeah, I think those are kind of the three legs of the Mm -hmm. stool, so to speak. And that is that, uh, first of all, is it in the Bible? Is it Mm -hmm. scriptural? Or if something is unscriptural, then, of course, it's not of God. And God would Mm -hmm. never lead you in a way that's unscriptural. And then there is the... uh, mature Christians around you. Uh, You get your input from them. You bounce it off of them. What do they think of that? And, uh, you know, then if that, uh, if it clears that level, you know, they're like, yeah, that sounds like a good thing, a godly thing, a holy thing. And then there is the, the third one, and that is the Holy Spirit speaking directly to you or leading you and, and uh, opening your mind and your eyes to certain things. And, and that's what gets the, maybe the hardest to discern, but is also the uh, kind of the premier place to be right. is that you're sensing and knowing that this is the Lord. Mm-hmm. And then you can move in that direction. But if it is the Lord, it will match those other things too. The the Lord will also be able to confirm that through other believers. You're not right. going to find a place where, you know, every Christian you talk to says, that's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, but I just think it's God telling me to. <laughs> mm. I mean, you are probably wrong Mm -hmm. in that case because things will start to line up for you. Right. And that's because we're part of a body. And Mm -hmm. that's something that we have to to remember is that we all have a a role within the church, um, but we're all just as important as the other. Mm -hmm. So so we do need to allow some room in our lives for the voice of other believers Mm -hmm. because we do rely on their skills in in their roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great point. We're part of the body. Mm -hmm. Now, this book you're working on girls with gusto what's that all about <laughs> so the uh the tagline is you don't have to be perfect to be perfected mm. and and that's just the important message behind it um going back to you know to, to my journey and where that all started and and the confusion that i had and in the um, struggles that i went through personally i, I didn't know uh, where i was headed or what the lord wanted for me i was at some point very willing uh, to be obedient but just didn't know what to do and i was already taking classes at the tallahassee christian college and uh, as he started to to unfold this topic of a journey to me it it was astounding and to see where i was on that uh that map um was was very challenging 
uh, there's a lot of, a lot of more steps in front of me mm-hmm. and uh, so so the book is is about that idea and uh, it's it's meant to help young women and it's kind of the 18 to 23 24 year old range which uh, I believe is where we really start to mess up because we have the freedom to do so. <laughs> All right. And uh, and it's to really step into the lives of, of those young women and and give them that roadmap. And that's that's what I call it. I refer to Proverbs 31 as the roadmap um, because in its verses, I've identified those steps. But then I take it from there and pull in so many scriptures throughout the word to flesh that out and say, okay, how, do, how does... How do we live this out? And, and then how do we move? How do we advance? Uh, I talk about the um, tactics of the enemy and how he can come against us in very unique ways in each of those eight steps and how we can prepare for that. Um, the different tools and techniques that the Lord gives us to thwart the enemy and to advance from one step to the next. Uh, and then finally, the, the idea that not only is this a journey with direction, but we're on a mission, and that's what's really cool about this. I felt aimless because I didn't know I had a mission. I knew I had a role. I knew I had some gifts, but I didn't know what it was for. And uh, just like movies like Lord of the Rings and um, you know C.S. Lewis uh, movies, you know, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, we, we have a mission, mission in our spiritual lives. And each of us are called to be the person that God meant for us to be. And, and so... What's funny about that, though, is we're not really to seek that person. We're to seek the Lord. Mm. And as we draw closer to him, we will become what he meant for us to be. So uh, I I think that that focus on the Lord is what's so critical. And that's why this is going to be such a fun class uh, this this semester, because we're going to focus on the word. We're going to focus on the Lord. And then through that, we're going to see where we land. Well, the Bible says we are not unaware of the devil's devices. Mm-hmm. And often when I read that, I think, oh, yes, we yes, are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. we are. So think of those mm-hmm. young ladies in that mm-hmm. category you mentioned. What is one thing, let's say they might be listening right now, what is one area where they might really be unaware of the devil's devices in their life? Mm. It's something that just comes to mind. Um, it, the first step is a clean heart, and and it seems so basic, you know. Oh, I'm a Christian, you know. Lord stepped in, and 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 we feel clean inside, and uh, it, it's it's amazing that the enemy is just so scared of even the smallest baby mm. believer, and and boy, he'll come full full throttle at us at that stage. And uh, for me, um, I dealt with emotional baggage with emotional issues. I, I dealt with depression. Um, I, I dealt with grief over the loss of my grandmother. Um, sin is always something that the enemy throws at us. And that's something that's a little more obvious. And we know we shouldn't do that. And the church really focuses at times mm-hmm. on different types of sin. But we really don't talk that much about emotional concerns that, that can get in the way. And they're not sin. It's just the enemy uses them. He'll use anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, to have a foothold in our lives. Um, I, and I've, I've joked about this uh, in the seminar I, I taught at the college last semester. We had a little one-day seminar, and, uh, and I threw out the example that sinus medicine, as silly as that is, uh, really makes me loopy. And, mm-hmm. it, and it makes me aggravated at everything in the world. And so I stay off of it because I didn't realize just what a bear it makes me. Mm-hmm. And how many people are on, on different medicines mm-hmm. and, and what that does to a person. It doesn't mean that they should get off of them. It just means we need to be cognizant of mm-hmm. the fact that it can really wreak havoc over our emotional well-being. And so sometimes what we think is the enemy is really... It's really pharmaceuticals or, or it's or it's other issues in our lives that are bringing us down, but the enemy will use it mm-hmm. for his advantage. And so I in in the manuscript, I encourage um, I encourage the, the young women to really examine their lives for any area where that enemy might try to have that foothold mm. as basic as it as it might be. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a great seminar. Ashley Jones, this is your opportunity to promote your seminar and brag a little bit about (laughs) TCCTC. It sounds like you've been a part of it for a while. I take every opportunity to brag about the college. I started there in, uh, I guess it was 04, 
So right smack in the middle mm. of of a very difficult time in my life. And and I, I tell people that the college became a soft place to land mm. for me. Um, even when I couldn't find a church where I fit in, I was able to find the college and the people there. And and the reason is because of the unity. In fact, I, I'm working on a blog right now, um, and I hope to have it posted on One Christian Voice. I, I blog in different places. And, and my blog, by the way, is Big Sister Knows. So we're taking this kind of idea to uh, to to the social media world in the blogosphere. Uh, but the idea of unity at the college is something that I, I've just never seen anywhere else. And it's not a unity that's contrived. It's not the kind that comes from everyone being the same. Mm-hmm. It comes from an extreme diversity. Uh, I've had people of all ages, colors, backgrounds, nationalities, denominations, congregations. We couldn't be more different. <laughs> and yet, because we love the Lord and we're seeking him, we are so similar, so much more similar than I am to people who are more like me in in more worldly ways. And so you walk in and you, you meet someone and instantly there's there's a connection because when you love the Lord and someone else loves the Lord, you recognize that mm-hmm. that brotherhood. And so uh, the unity is is really what keeps me coming back. So I I took night classes and weekend classes for five years uh, while while I was working full time. And uh, and I went for a master's in biblical studies and uh, tried to emphasize in Greek and Hebrew and uh, loved every single second of it. And then have taken a few classes since then. Haven't had as much time as I'd like to mm-hmm. get back in. Uh, but I also served on the board for about a year and a half and still found that level of unity at that level, which was really amazing. <laughs> I did not expect that. And uh and now coming back as faculty, and and funny enough, that's really what, kind of what the goal was. Um, the reason why I got plugged in in 2004 was because the Lord birthed this idea, this book, um, His message in me in 2003. Mm. And I thought, okay, great. God gave me this idea. I'm going to go sit down and I'm going to write. And I did. And I stayed up at nights and I'm just pouring everything out that I could that He gave me. And uh, then He said, okay, that's great. Now stop. Mm. And now I want you to go take some classes. Mm. And I thought, really? You you gave me this goal, and now you want me to stop? And he said, yes, I do. I want mm. you to be prepared, and you're not. And so that's why I, I dug into the Word. And so I can't tell my story about the book without talking about the college, and I can't talk about the college without talking about the book, because the Lord just really integrated all of it in my life in a way that I could never have have planned on purpose. He's cool like that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now you have this uh, five week class coming up in the fall semester, invite people to come. Oh, absolutely. And you know, the college is open to everyone, Doug. So Mm -hmm. um, even if, if someone's listening, who's curious about God and, and about this relationship and doesn't know much about it, they're absolutely welcome. We, we do have non-believers come just to seek what it's about. Um, we have people who are seeking uh, degrees in seminary like I was. And then we have folks who just want to audit, who, who just want to talk about the topic and, and dig into it. So everyone is welcome. Um, like I said, all backgrounds, all education levels. Uh, so that's what's really, really so unique about the college. Um The neat thing about this class is that I want each student to walk away with a plan. And that's, that's, uh, spoiler alert, that's going to be our project for (laughs) for this semester. So the idea is for the student to figure out where they are in their walk and what they need to do to get to the next level. It's not for me to say. It's not for any of us. It's it's an individual assessment. And I, I cannot wait to see how the students are encouraged and challenged and what they come up with. Um, You know, they may identify those blocks like we were talking about the enemy coming in. They may identify those ways and and decide, you know what, I'm not putting up with that anymore. What do I need to do to move on? And uh, it can be a life-changing experience. I personally am going through this and and Mm. can attest to that. It's a a deal. It's a a, um, change maker for sure. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's Ashley Jones, and again, her class is Navigating Your Spiritual Journey, and that's going to be coming up in a five-week class in the fall semester at Tallahassee 
Christian College and Training Center. You can find all the information on their website, tcctc.org. They also have a new location at 1717 Hermitage Boulevard. And I always say it's kind of the cut through between Thomasville Road and Capitol Circle Northeast. Hermitage Boulevard, that gives you an idea of what part of town it's on. And they have a beautiful new facility there. Call it a campus, if you will. And a great library set up. So all kinds of things that are happening at TCCTC. Joanne Arnett is the president there. She's been here on Wave 94 many times. So check it out and especially check into Ashley Jones's class, Navigating Your Spiritual Journey. And Ashley, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate it. And for Wave 94... I'm Doug Apple.